Hello folks, we're back again and today we're going to take a look at uh, mist wind. I guess. What they call it, wind wind. <laughs> mist wind. <laughs> yeah. Mist it, wind. It makes me think of myth, is it myth, myth wind. Myth wind. Is that another one? Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. If you Google this, you're going to get a few of these videos mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of myth wind videos because apparently they've been just cranking out the content. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got that, that that same kind of pretty adventuristic art you look like it looks like you're this guy adventuring yeah. <laughs> around doing stuff while whales are flying around you very different than the art wonder how dangerous yeah. it is to kind of stand underneath one of these flying whales you do not you do not want a dropping to, to, to come upon you no so mist wind is uh is sort of ups in the sky it's in a world where mm -hmm. with a bunch of floating islands kind of like miss theo maybe yeah, yeah, <laughs> a whole yeah. bunch of floating islands, yeah. and, and you're delivering with your with your flying whales. You're delivering packages back and forth, and creating routes mm -hmm. and building bases and stuff like that. Uh, it's a it's a really interesting grouping of mechanisms. Mm -hmm. uh, I just received it last week, and I've gotten to play it just a few times. So this is going to be sort of a first impressions. Uh, Owen and I just played a game. This mm -hmm. is his. First game is yeah. like my third game, so it's definitely time to t to talk about this and and, uh, and decide who this is made for. Yeah, well, do you like pick up and deliver? <laughs> that's a pick up and deliver game, but do you it's like also route building. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's that's the uh, uh, well, it's kind of similar to to um, God. Why is my brain my brain's not working anymore? Um, Ticket to Ride. Oh yeah, it's got some Ticket to Ride sort of elements too. Very, very much uh, has a, a very strong mechanic that reminds you of Ticket to Ride, but it's not like this constant Ticket to Ride thing. It's got a little bit of that. Uh, the pickup and deliver is, is definitely very much there, but it's not like pure pickup and I don't know. I mean, I guess it's an it, element. Every every it's pickup a, and a, deliver game is usually I don't know unless you're playing the the. the um, the uh, spice road or whatever oh yeah century spice road like that's like a pure pickup and deliver kind of thing um with this one yeah it's like like most pickup and delivers is going to add some extra elements into it so it's an interesting yeah. grouping of mechanisms yeah. in fact let me run down what you do in a turn of mist wind mm -hmm. all right so what you're seeing here is the end game from owen and i's uh, last turn of mist wind and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over uh, very quickly what you do in a round and what you can expect in terms of gameplay from this game. The first two things I want to mention is one, it does have a rule book that's very, very short, concise, and easy to read. Another thing to know is they included these player aids that explain every single space you see on the sides and all of the cards that are in the game. That's all explained uh, and these two pages right here. It's pretty concise, it's easy to read, and it keeps you from bringing the rule book out uh, during the game. In fact, I, even with a new game like this, I did not have to break out the rule book quite at all because it's all right here. In fact, this information isn't even in the rule book, which I find kind of unusual. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it seemed to be really effective. So in addition to that, we've got this little card here that goes over all the stuff that you're gonna do in the round. And then on the other side, it's got the end game stuff. So if you're curious about end game scoring and what gives you points and what doesn't, you've got this to kind of quietly look at. So a concept you need to understand in this game is that you've got these action discs. These action discs have numbers. It's one through five. And these numbers uh, correspond to the actions that you can do all around the board. There's a five through one here. Uh, there's one through five there, one through five there, and so on. Uh, you're going to pick a number, and then it goes down uh, on that corresponding number. So you can't put your one disc on a three. And that should be self-explanatory. You also don't get to do everything around the board, only the one thing that you've chosen. So with that in mind, at the beginning of every round, the player has to choose one of these discs not to do. So they're going to sacrifice one of these discs. This is in a, uh, a one to four player game. In a, one to, in a five player game, you're going to pick two of these discs that you're not going to do. So you're going to take that disc and you're going to put it there. So I've chosen the one and I'm giving it away. So I won't be able to choose any of the things in a one spot. I'll have to uh, make do with these other ones. And if it was a five player game, I'd be picking another number uh, to also sacrifice. 
everybody else is doing the same. If you're playing with AI, like if you're playing with two players, they're going to have you have uh, extra sets of these discs, you know, two sets. So the, I, I, it doesn't say in the instructions to do this, but I've been just doing this anyway. I just pick a random number and, uh, and I put it away. So all the players that are playing are going to put their disc in there like that. Then you've got your disc. Now on your turn, you have mandatory, you must play one of these discs and they're going to go on one of these things. So as I mentioned before, we're going to take the disc and we're going to place it on one of these things and take the corresponding action. This side of the board mostly gives you resources like steel, wood, krill, and money in different portions. And up here at the top we have crew cards. These crew cards can give you different kinds of effects that are either immediate, something you can save for later, or end of the game. They, uh, they're very handy. They do have a points cost, so you have to have that many coins to take it. It's got some wonderful art, very clear icon iconography to help you uh, know when to do something and what you get to do. I really like these. There's one through five, and then the first spot on the other side will let you pick blindly. You get two of these and then pick the one you want. On the other side here, you've got a lot of other handy things to do, like uh, build more whales and stations move around and drop out, drop off or pick up something, grab that first player marker, which is really handy in a game where you're gonna be blocking off uh, other people's choices with your chips. This also lets you rearrange your resources. Uh, this one here will let you pay a coin to do one of these actions across the bottom of these cards. And let's explain these. These are ports that you're able to visit. These port cards are really interesting. They've got, uh, this symbol up here, will, which indicates the area that it's talking about, so that's going to be this purple spot over here. And uh, another symbol that lets you know you can build. So most all of these let you build someplace. And they've got a real specific place that they're going to have you build. When you build using these, you're going to be using your wood and your steel resources. The other thing on all of these cards is another action here on the, on the bottom. So what's you, unique about this row of cards is that uh, multiple people can visit. So somebody can come here, uh, do this build action, and somebody else can come around and do it also. Uh, build in the same place. And then uh, it's even possible for another person to come around and do it as well. So at the end of the round, after everybody's gone, whoever's disc is on top will also get to do this action. The only other way to do this action is to choose the number five spot over here. And uh, if you choose this spot, you can also do one of those actions. Sort of an alternative thing that you can do when you come here. So you might want to lay your disc down. Maybe that's the only disc you had left. And that spot has already been used quite a bit by these other players. And you don't even need to build there. The other alternative thing you can do is take resources based on the amount of discs that are there. So you could pick one resource like steel, for instance, and get three of them because including yours, there's three discs there. You also will win this bonus at the end of the round. So even if you don't really need to go here to build, there are other reasons to go. So at the beginning of the game, you're gonna get three of these connection cards, an easy one, a moderate one, and a difficult one to accomplish. Uh, they have these little dots on them. So you've got, you want to connect this and this via this. <laughs> so you've got to have a line of unbroken either ships or or these uh, little stations here. If you've got an unbroken line of those between here to here, and it's a little deceptive because they're little straight lines, but there's no straight line there. So if you did this, you might have to build something here, 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 then here, then here, here, then up here, then up here. <laughs> That's one possible path to get from there to there. You could also, I guess, go all the way around through here and do it that way. So uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. And there's a couple of different types of scenarios in which to do it. You've got these cards here, which have the two things that got to connect. And you get to choose which of the ones that you connect through. Kind of interesting. Uh, if you complete this in your four to five rounds, depending on your player count, uh, you get to take the big number. If you get like some of it done, but not all of it, by the end of the game, you get this little small number. So another networking concept that they have in this game are these capital city keys. 
I call them that because they kind of look like keys. Uh, these are randomly drawn, so they're different ones. And I think they're, yeah, they're different player counts too uh, by the which side you turn this on. And what this says is that Capital City, much like the card I just showed, that Capital City is going to want to connect to this particular, uh, this particular port. Uh, in this case, it's going to be this green flag way up here. You'll see a number of these flags. We've got a purple, a green one, kind of a mauve one, and then a, uh, a brown one down there. So if you're the first to do this, then you get to take your little token. Every color has their own little tokens, and you cover up that space, and you're going to get the big points. And the next person to do it gets a slightly smaller prize. So after you've played your disc onto a number and done that action, then you have the opportunity to move. Uh, moving your whale requires krill. Krill is a resource on your little resource board. It's that yellow one down at the bottom. So you could pay one krill and then move one area. The area that you stop in, and you can pay multiple krill to move further. The other concept to know is if you're at a station, like he starts off with this one that has one of his stations and wants to move here, you do not have to pay a krill. The same is true for locations that have a whale like yours too. So if you were here and wanted to move here, it would be free. So hypothetically, if I wanted to go from here to here, uh, and I didn't want to go that, around that way, I could go here for free, here for one krill, and then wherever else I wanted to go for free. With that ability, the more of these stations that go out, the more you're going to be able to scoot all around the map. Wherever you end up on the map is going to have a symbol. Uh, a lot of places are places where you can deliver. That would be the capitals and these flags here. When your whale is parked on one of those at the end of the turn, you may load it. So you can load it with whatever relevant resource. I guess this represents the fabrics and stuff. And there are little cubes that fit in the back of the whales nicely. So if on your turn you end up in one of these ports, uh, you can drop off one of your goods. Now what goods these ports actually want are listed here. Uh, the bottom two are the ones that actually give you something. These other ones you can trade in because they are worth other things like different points at the end of the game. Uh, each of these is worth one towards having a majority in the area also. But ideally you want to trade in something of very high value, something all the way at the bottom and get the full benefit. Capital areas are really similar, but uh, the things that they have to sell are worth uh, two points towards the majority and don't have any sort of other benefit that they give. But these are great for grabbing up majority in an area. Throughout your turns, you're going to be uh, tracking resources. This, this is like a little Kickstarter extra version with uh, little icons and stuff. Otherwise, you'll just have little square cubes that'll fit in here. But uh, it's real effective. There's only four different resources to track and you spend different things, uh, utilize these resources. Also on this is a nice little breakdown, a very, very summary breakdown of your player turn and what it costs to build different things. A little bit of an explanation on how you move. You pay a krill to move one spot. You don't have to pay a krill if you have one of your things there. Really easy, nice reminder, especially for first time players. So at the end of the game, uh, whoever's got the biggest number on their crates uh, will win five points towards the majority. There's four of these to consider. Another thing you'll be going for during the game are these goals. These goals are kind of randomly driven. There's a pile of A's, B's, and C's. In fact, these are not in the right order, but just for example, I'm kind of laying them here <laughs> where they'd go. If in the game you accomplish any of these things, you'll take it and then keep it with you for your end of the game points. Uh, this will not refill. There'll never be another opportunity to get that particular thing. So it's uh, it's great to grab these up. These are these are points that other people can't get. So at the end of the round, you're going to scrap all these cards. You're going to scrap all those cards across the top. And when it gets to the final round, you'll count up all your score, and then you'll beat me horribly, like everyone else did. The one mechanic I think that I like the most out mm -hmm. of the game that is. Um... I don't know if it's the most unique thing in the world, but it's still, it still it comes out really well in this pickup and deliver mechanic. Is the fact that you have four different areas on the board that you're uh, placing your action token, I guess you'd call your your chip, your your poker chip, uh, with a number. Uh, you got one through five, and it's listed all around the board. So if you have a a, a four, you can put it in f potentially four different locations yep. that get blocked off. 
Um, I like that a lot because there's sometimes there's some spots where you could do multiple things and you're not sure and that that little crunchy decision space that you're you're creating in between trying to figure out now how push your luck another yeah, mechanism yeah 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 you're certainly pushing your luck uh, and 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 I like how there's certain things that you need to get done and you see a couple different ways to do it and you might try to mitigate your luck too as well um, because I found myself taking numbers uh, just because I wanted to have the option like okay if this doesn't work if somebody else takes it before I get the chance I have another way to get to it in this other way uh, that those convoluted I, I enjoy convoluted routes and <laughs> games to get the <laughs> things that you need to get done but also being able to see them fairly well um, so and, and I like how they did that with the game so this has an automated opponent to kind of simulate having more players mm -hmm. so if uh, if it in two-player mode, what they want you to do. In fact, the only mode that doesn't have this, like a solo, you're taking three other ones. Mm -hmm. uh, two-player, you take two other ones. Uh, mm -hmm. Player colors you're not using. You're just keeping four players in the game, basically, right? Right, yeah. pretty mm -hmm. much all the time. But there's nothing for three-player. So I guess three-player would be a different experience than one I haven't had yet because it doesn't say anything about adding discs for that. So I guess I get I guess you're kind of getting in your way enough, but it probably doesn't play as well at three player. Well, I wonder if there's a little bit of a difference in um, a person actively making decisions versus just randomly because the way That's it true. works with these is the players that that aren't playing that the the little bonus players or extra player what do you mm. call them AI AI players. <laughs> Uh, they're just you shuffle their discs and then you just pull one out and it takes up a space mm -hmm. and it'll start on uh, the resource side of the board and move over to the the worker side of the board and then on over to this side. So, so I guess a more apt name would be a dummy player because the um, because they're just they're not really AI they're dummy they they just take random uh, right. decisions and all they do is they get in your way, mm -hmm. which makes it really easy to kind of simulate make it a bigger player game. Hmm. But without a lot of overhead. In fact, there's almost no overhead. You pick up a disc, you cover up the spot. You can't do that, and right. then that's and then that's it. That's why you need the four players, or at the very least, the three players. I think to make the game work, because that's such a big part of the game is being blocked from things that you otherwise would want to do. So on a solo game, uh, if you play solo, then hmm. you you you're putting random discs out as usual. But your goal is. Uh, it, they have an easy, medium, and hard. Uh -huh. And like uh, the easy one is just to get, uh, I think it's like 30 points and a couple of other things. And the medium one, you've got to have to get some other end game goals and some other kinds of routes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And a route card, one of your route cards has yeah, to be complete. You just have to complete more objectives. Yeah. So it gives mm -hmm. you it gives you kind of a difficult or scaling uh, amount of difficulty in the amount of points that you make at the end of it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, it's great that you have options uh, for literally every player count, uh, up to four. <laughs> Anyways, not every player count. It doesn't, it doesn't go up to fifty. It goes to uh, five players. Oh, it does go uh, to five. Yeah. Oh. It, oh it, it five. Wow. I wonder what uh, five. That's gonna get. That's got. That would be busy, huh? That would be really interesting to see what happened. That five. Can do. Is there even enough room for? I guess five, four. You have four to, It would well, be literally but, every single spot could get taken. Yeah. And that down here on the bottom, remember, you can stack. Right. So that's probably where that thing where you can pick up resources on the stack. You have to of. have somewhere to drop them. Yeah. And it would almost like, especially towards the end of the round, it would like be an attractive spot to, to I just think, pick up resources. Yeah. Well, at five players, there's some of these uh, player cards and other things that probably make more sense. Mm -hmm. Like there's one of the... One of the helpers you can get will take your disc from the bottom and put it to the top. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the round, you're going to get the bonus if you're at the top of the stack. Right, so, yeah. Uh, I bet in five players, it's going to happen a lot. Yeah. You're going to get stacks of things. Mm -hmm. How yeah. frustrating that would be. <laughs> right, yeah. Because that's a really neat mechanic in the game, too, is this idea that, like, these building spots in the bottom, which a tend ports. to be the last, yeah, the building port, whatever, the, the ports that tend to allow you to build at these locations. Um tend to be taken last in the round just just because you're usually gaining resources and things ahead of time uh, but uh, that it has that little bit of that again that kind of 
uh, a convoluted pathway into what you need to get done because it, it, it's it's sort of that that white castle thing of like there's an extra action that you're getting to do at the end of the, the uh, round and I, I like that a lot i think i thought that was that was a really neat way to get some additional things i got like a, a pretty big move right at the end of the game yeah. just because of that because of having a couple extra things it let me chain together every single one of my uh outposts at the end uh which i didn't even think it was going to happen and it just kind of was like oh it's there okay cool <laughs> so i didn't really plan it ahead but it, it's it, like an extra four or five points at least right yeah and if you were planning that out though there's there's some really neat like especially all these ones that are out in this last round that we had if you had a bunch of resources at the end you could have just uh built a ridiculous amount of stuff just by putting your chips at the end uh, mm. up here so I, li I like that a lot and and uh and you would certainly be fighting for that a lot more too i would imagine in a in a five player game um and you're gonna have people going for the same like objectives a lot too and those and and, and those player counts I feel uh, like this game's got just the right amount of AP. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and what I was telling Owen is uh, early in the round, when you've got all your discs and their options and not everything's blocked off, you got some decisions to make. It's like, because the two over here is really good and the two over there is really good and mm -hmm. maybe you have to do that to get that. Or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a lot of decisions to make. But as things get blocked off and your choices decline and get smaller and smaller and smaller, you're gonna have to settle, mm. <laughs> so you're not forced into like a, always an optimal scenario. You're gonna get a, you're gonna get pigeonholed into a particular couple of numbers and stuff. Yeah, you yeah. can still find I interesting do. little puzzly things to work out, but mm -hmm. yeah, I do I do like that. That is my favorite thing about the game. I feel like that's like kind of their shtick that they've got going on in this game that makes them different to. I don't know. I'm sure there's so the other... action selection with the yeah. Chips. I mean, there's plenty of other games that do something similar. I mean, what like um, I, well, didn't what's the what what's what's furnace? The, yeah, furnace does the chip thing. You know, and furnace you bed spots. with the chips and stuff. So mm. it's it's it yeah. similar. Yeah, you're dropping a chip. You're dropping a random chip on this one. So you're you're creating this like un uh like you you can't be certain of what actions you can take. So not not pure you you i guess it's kind of taken some of that euro element out of it at that point because you can't really fully, fully plan out your turns um so you're, you're dealing mm -hmm. with that randomness um i would like to play this at five players oh yeah um yeah. i think i think it played really well at two but i think it'd be a lot funner playing at the higher player counts so just be like yeah, like an actual game of four i don't know about three i don't know about three i don't know if three I would try it certainly, but I don't know about three. About uh, just taking that three is that up. weird player count yeah. anyway that that never happens for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I yeah. can never get that need magic that, three that, player. Need that third wheel in here, um, but yeah, I would really like to play it at five. I think that'd be really um, aggravating in a good way. Like <laughs> just like how people are like oh, I can't do anything. Maybe it would suck. Maybe it wouldn't be fun. Maybe four is like the best player count. I could see it really dragging out, mm -hmm. being kind of long. But they give you a long time to maybe plan but out your rounds. You'd also have a lot less that you could do. So it's like, ah, I can't do that. I can't do that. Crap, These cards would become supremely like so much more important mm -hmm. than they are in a smaller player count. Yeah, well, especially for us playing a, a, even a two-player, um, the AI, the dummies, uh, do not get all the way around the board except for rarely are they going to be able to get all the way around to start taking up some of the building uh, port locations so uh, and what ends up happening is uh you almost never pull characters because you you'll probably go and get some supplies on the on the mm -hmm. left side mm -hmm. uh the characters are very situational like uh if you if you're paying a close attention to stuff for for me every time i could and wanted a particular character i didn't have the money to pick them up Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, the AI bots always ended up, uh, up uh, uh, covering up all the characters just about. So. Yeah, and the and the characters. I mean, you you have to sacrifice so much to go for some of those characters, and they can give you some really big point scoring. I mean, I got one at the end off of a random pull from one of the action selection spaces, and uh, and it had enough time to make it work really well for me. Um, but I can imagine if you were to pull, you know, three different point scoring 
character cards, it can be a, a really big jump in your points, mm -hmm. but you're missing out on setting yourself up to for your kind of like, I don't know, there's a little bit of production in the game. It's very minor kind of production that you're developing with the, the, the whales themselves or kind of your... It's, these keep looking like factories to me, but it's your whales that are actually like ga grabbing stuff, picking stuff up. And they're like way stations that you're going along the way. Yeah, yeah, they're they're, <laughs> they're krill feeding stations. They <laughs> just toss krill out from the lighthouse. They just <laughs> send packages. Those are out. just straws. There's yeah, a krill yeah. mill down inside, and <laughs> the whale just kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Keep you moving. Yeah, yeah. Krill is a is an interesting mechanic in the game that really uh, feels really important to be in the game, and then and then not so much as you start building out and gaining routes to move through. But um, the theme is very imaginative, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. I, I think I think the artwork and the theme uh, really go well together. The way they did the map, uh, we were talking. We really like this this map mm. that they've made is real real nautical you yeah, know it's it's that's a little bit of you know it's got enough fantasy in it to make it uh interesting there's some pretty elements on it without being you know gaudy or anything like that you know other than like maybe a little bit of the iconography is like not necessarily nautical but it's still it's not too over the top it's well done uh, fairly tasteful the iconography uh on the board too is I, I appreciate that it's big enough i can read yeah that icon from way over here mm -hmm. uh, it's very clearly made very clean uh in the graphics mm -hmm. from here uh there is a, quite a lot of icons and uh and things but they have a player aid that literally in fact there's nothing about how all of this stuff works in the rule book Oh, really? The rule book leaves out all the stuff that's on this player aid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. So, yeah. So, so the rule book's like very, very mm -hmm. short. You can read that rule book like a, a one good trip to the restroom and you, you can have that yeah. thing read. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's a pretty simple game overall, but but definitely plenty of, of puzzle involved and, with it where it's Well, it's these, things, these things you figure out, you know, uh, you figure them out pretty quick, yeah. and all the card, every single card that's in here, every single action tile, all of these uh, port cards and stuff, all of it's explained on here, and it's really not a lot of information. Mm -hmm. and it's pretty intuitive. It uh, is. After yeah. a little there, bit. There's a couple things where you're like, "Oh, how's that work?" And like, "Oh, okay." You know, as soon as it's, as soon as it's explained to you, you, you can remember it for the rest of the game, no problem. Um, I, this is, it, you don't have. You're not going to be going back and forth to the rule book for this. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, it's, it's, no, you'll no. get it. Once you get, the, yeah, once you hear the, like, the, again, a couple of the iconography things, you're like, what's this mean? And you get told, totally like, okay, I got so it. So, what would you Remember put the, the weight? The, the weight, um, like, how hard would this be to play if you're new? I mean, I, I would definitely not put this over a medium, medium, like, right in the middle. I think it's um, low, medium. Yeah. Like, because the rule set's real, like, it's weight, medium because you could you got a lot to figure out. Yeah, weight weight can be confused a little bit because uh, it's well, I, I don't, it's a combination of two things. Weight's like how Complex. easy it is to take, yeah, how easy it is to take in a rule set, and then how difficult it is to play. You're kind of mixing those. Uh, that's the way I think of weight because sometimes it's not too hard to figure out the rules, but it's like you got really complicated thought processes for your turns. It's not that complicated mm -hmm. here. So yeah, you know, I guess it could be kind of on the, on the lighter end of, um, yeah, like a two point, two 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 point five or something. What is it out of five? Is what they usually do the the weight ratings on. Uh, that's the heaviest on on board game geek. I think it's, it's a five. Uh, so, if you so don't like play a, games very like often, two, two point one, two point two, something like that. <laughs> yeah, like I don't know, maybe somewhere around there. That's, do they go one to five in their complexity? Yeah, I, it's it's kind of hard to say because I, I felt like there like there are moments of AP in here, and there's certainly like uh, you can you, you can definitely optimize and get stuck in an AP zone a bit, and during your optimization of your turns. So mostly in like moving your whales around uh -huh. and decide where they're going to go next and stuff like that. And that, like, and that can make a turn, that can make a game feel weightier than it is rules wise, but the rules are super easy to pick up. Um, so yeah, I don't to know. Me, if you've got a basic understanding of the rules, Light it's medium, not something yeah. you got to go back and look at yeah. it again and again. Uh, one good rules reference sheet and you're pretty much good to go on mm -hmm. anything you need to know in there. Yeah. Uh, I really, 
uh, I think I think for newer mm-hmm. players, this is going to be a very friendly, sure. like little bit more complex game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This would this like somebody that's not a gamer gamer person would look at this and go, ah, oh, what? You got all these little icons and stuff. They haven't seen this. But if you're in this zone at all, like this is very uh, easy to, to grasp. Like even if you've gotten up to Ticket to Ride. <laughs> Yeah. Like if you're gonna buy a, a next game right after Ticket yeah, to Ride, yeah, it's like a step above Ticket to Ride, yeah. I would say. Yeah, because it adds all these other mechanisms with some familiar it, kind of themes. It is yeah. not as difficult as Sand, I don't think. Like, oh, I think gosh, I think no. I think Sand is more, at least initially, Sand is a lot more complicated uh, to 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 grok the the rule set for uh, and the the pathway to any kind of um, efficient victories or anything like that. Sam gave me a headache. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to you figure would, it out. I think you'd bit. like it a lot better the second time, but yeah. like, yeah, that first time's a little, a little, yeah, it's a little difficult to, to get your head around. But this is still a first impressions. We did not play with the more interactive side of the board. Um, I, I would be really interested to see how that plays, especially at a five player, you know, a bigger player count. Um, playing with this more because there is a, a fair amount of um, multiplayer solitaire going on. There is some interaction that I found. Uh, well, okay, so you're getting in each other's way. On, just with the disc. This, yeah. this is you're you're. It's it's always with the AIs getting in the way just as much that like as much as you were getting in my way. I wasn't even really. It wasn't I wasn't aggravating you a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, or I wasn't. I wasn't really taking you into account. I was just taking into account that spots were going to be taken. Right. It could be. It could have been any of them. Um, I wasn't fighting over the the first player token too much, or anything like that. Um, so the other part of it was just like seeing um, there. There's some. There's some one uh, one chance kind of bonus tiles that you can grab. You complete a certain objective. Uh, we were. You know, having to race a little bit for those. There was like maybe one that we were actually like kind of. I don't even know if Sean was even going after it. I just know that he with was the getting, flags. Yeah, he was. Yeah, getting, I, was, he, I had my eye on it. He, he was getting kind of close with that. The resource. There's a resource one that we either of us could have like just maxed out on resources for a little bit and gotten. Um, but otherwise, other than that, it was just getting in the way of the deliveries. Like if you see somebody else, like I, I did do that once with Sean at the end. I, I saw that he was. I wanted to get as much of a color of delivery as I, I, I could to, to at least even where he was at. So I only needed to get a couple. Uh, and I did that specifically just to be able to negate a five point gain from that. So, um, yeah, but otherwise there wasn't really much direct interaction. There's a li- again, little rate, there's small races. If you find yourself going after the same thing, um, but it didn't happen too often. In a they must have got some feedback for that because you can flip over either side of the board and there's like where every one of these mm-hmm. interacts with the other people. Yeah. Like instead of pick two two character cards and keeping one, you pick two character cards, you keep one, and you give one to someone else. Yeah, that's that that I like. I do like this. I would if I play this again, which I'm, I'm hopefully I will at some point. I did enjoy. The first play of I'd it. Like to try the other side. I would like to try the other side at at least a three player or a, uh, really ideally a four or even five player player count. I think that's where it's going to be. Um, this is great to learn the game. I think the two player is an excellent uh, learning game. I could I could have fun doing this again, but I think I know my experience is going to be lighter playing a two player game as opposed oh, yeah. to I think if we played a four or five player game, it would be a, a, a more rich deeper experience well it's interesting because you don't um there's no where you don't take up space on the map that other people can, can't go to like you do some games mm-hmm. where if i've got a character there you yeah. can't go there uh on the map part it's not like that so it's um it's really interesting how, how things kind of intermingle and and uh yeah 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 buildings awkward like that's an awkward thing to get used to is that you can build anywhere on the the map as long as it's an illegal position according to what your building uh spot is so that's a kind of a weird thing to get used to on the map as well so the map the map seems a little like you're like huh wait we can't get we're not getting in each other's way like you built there but i can also build here and also travel there there's no penalty because you're like you got ptsd from other games that that (laughs) that uh, in there, and then, uh, and then, like thinking that you have to have a worker somewhere to build, 
in a location like yeah. that th throws you off in the beginning. So that's yeah. So the two space will let you build uh, anywhere you want on the map. So you... really, those two things are the only things though that felt like awkward at first. Like uh, where I had to be like, oh, okay, I gotta get used to this. It challenges unique... assumptions. Yeah, that you would exactly. Make yeah, based yeah. on like every other kind of game. I had to get used to the, um, the this game's own uh, slight quirkiness in that way, but the rest of it was, you know, again, fairly familiar, but you still its own unique blend of everything. The components, especially in this uh, Kickstarter Deluxe one, are really nice. Uh, yeah, the whales are kind of funny looking, <laughs> but they're but they're neat. Yeah, they're 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 pretty. Uh, uh, I, this has a wash on it, which was another $20. Uh, I feel like this wash you could probably do pretty easily if you, if you, uh, if you have some contrast paint or something. Oh, yeah. I, I, I lately just appreciate not having to do stuff. It came out good on most of them. Some of these you can't tell so much. You're right. Like the red one, you, you honestly kind of can some. I mean, you, you, you can't can really see, see it. Dark, well, like, you see, it's got a little bit of a, it doesn't really darken a whole lot. In like you can see, so you see more like a, not the dark part, but like the highlight mm -hmm. that they brushed into it. Yeah. That's what you see more. Yeah. And um, the yellow one's sort of like that too. Like mm -hmm. I can't see much. On no. The and honestly, um, I, if it was me, if I was buying the game straight off uh, from, from the bat, I, I would I would probably be just as happy without the wash. Um, if it, if it, as long as it comes with these, these minis are really nice. Yeah, I think it would kind of suck to have these as wood. You know, oh yeah, like, I don't like, think there's a wood option. Okay, for okay, so yeah, I just I feel like there's a certain level of aestheticness that like they need in the game, <laughs> and uh, and I feel like this particular one would uh, feel uh, a little too bland uh, without because uh, these are really nice the the miniatures that they have. It's only two kinds of miniatures. Um, and these poker chips were something that uh, was an upgrade mm -hmm. as part of the Kickstarter. Uh, that, they, that's a really nice upgrade too. I these like clay that. chips just feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you cannot stop playing with them. So. You can't. In fact, yeah. I'm trying to keep them away so I don't just click through the whole video. <laughs> right there. Click, click, click. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice... Uh, yeah, that would kind of suck to not have... Well, especially in a game where, like, there, that's such a, uh, a weighty... Comp like, not just physically weighty but like a weighty component like a thing like an I important them yeah an yeah, important I, component. I, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. so they're pretty too. i think i think that makes sense that you would want uh poker chips for this it would suck to have those as cardboard if they're wood maybe if they're wood maybe okay but like <laughs> if they're not wood at least uh i think it was gonna suck to just have some big flat cardboard pieces yeah and it's still you can still play the game but a lot of the big part of a lot of these games is the a certain level of aesthetic uh, if the tactile pleasure. feel isn't mm -hmm. nice just play a video game right yeah <laughs> you know what i mean if it doesn't like present I mean, and, and beautiful here in front of you and feel nice in your hand then yeah there are certain games where i'm okay either way like i'm like okay the cardboard's fine it doesn't make that big of a difference um i wouldn't i, I wouldn't care if these were made out of wood these little crates i mean it'd be cool if you really had some deluxified version that uh, extra deluxified you know the second edition that comes with now we have wooden crates to sell to you, <laughs> um, like like something like uh, Castles of Burgundy does. Um, but I mean, it would be nice, but they're not that important of a of a of a piece. I gotta so. say that the art from the cards and stuff is mm -hmm. just outstanding. Yeah, yeah, very pretty, and they're and not lazy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of art in here, <laughs> like all it all those oh, character yeah. cards are unique. Mm -hmm. All of these port cards are unique. Uh, we did our standard four round game and we're not even halfway through well probably about halfway through the both of these I guess yeah. maybe a little bit more but the, every one of them that I pick up is just a joy to look at I mean they're all really nice mm -hmm. and uh, some like I just like I just got Assassin's Creed mm -hmm. right and, and I went to paint it there's exactly like three illustrations in that whole game Mm. everything else is text and diagrams and stuff and it's like there's set yeah that, that game's got like years and years and years and years of artwork that's been generated i don't know a lot of it's computer stuff but yeah that there's so much more uh was there was so much more put into this than, mm. uh, than so many other games i see these days that don't really focus on the artwork well like uh i so 
I, I enjoyed Revive quite a bit. Revive had uh, three different kinds of artwork on the uh, in the entire game. You got you had very different cards, uh, very different abilities on each one of them, uh, and the exact same artwork on the on the whole thing. And it was kind of bland. I mean, the 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 artwork was great on that game, but also like like you said, kind of lazy in some aspects where they were just repeating the same stuff. That's also another game that had a lot more going on with it that made it, int it you know, whatever. We're just not a revive. Uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> Sleeping review, but... Sleeping Gods was the same way. Yeah. Sleeping Gods had, they, it starts off with this comic book mm -hmm. and then your character boards are just like one of the panels from that comic book. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then and, and that's all that's all the art you have of them. You don't even get to know what kind of color their pants are. Really. Uh, it's like yeah. it's just that's yeah, all you it's got. Just one little character. There's a lot of artwork in the in the map and and then the, the other you know other things that you encounter and stuff. Yeah. But one drawing of the character. I mean, of the main character. Yeah. They're, they're little line drawings. You, come on, you can knock out one. Yeah. yeah. So that I so. Big big kudos. I love I love the it, it really solidifies the theme and make gives you an idea mm -hmm. of like this world that you're in. Yeah, it's an excellent uh, cover art. Uh, this guy, I guess Gordon Oscar's the guy doing all of the art. Is that right? Yeah, it looks like. Yeah. And so that's a that's a name I'm not familiar with. Um, first but, first fish games. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and and well, we who we have Adrian as met. Uh, Adam Adam Escu and uh, Daryl Andrews. Um, again, not particularly familiar with uh, anything else that they've they've worked on. Uh, I think the I think this kind of lends itself to another like like they could deepen this world. I could see them making. I mean, I kind of I look at this and I kind of want to like do play some adventure esque game. You know, where you're like, yeah, I want to be the little guy down there. That's dealing with the whale you know the guy that's on the ground yeah i personally uh, hope they do really really well and then just like branch off and make some mm -hmm. other games in the same universe i don't want to see more yeah I what's want going some on more floating whales that you're not necessarily hunting or maybe you are hunting them maybe you could do a crossover and hunt them with uh, uh they could do the, another one where you're <laughs> where you're a farmer like uh collecting the whale dung and <laughs> That would be, be kind of fun. It's like the make sure that the whales travel past your farms on yeah. the way there. You have to bribe the, the pilots. And yeah, stuff. yeah, you could do some neat things. Yeah, yeah, have a little little resource production game or something. Yeah, farming game. It'll be uh, uh, U A Rosenberg's next uh, introduction. <laughs> oh, a Agricola whale version. Oh, yeah. Flying whale Agricola. Whale, whale Agricola. Whale Agricola. Yeah. A whale Agricola. Yeah. Well, you know, well. Okay. <laughs> I think we pushed it off. It's getting that time. So, just a quick first impression. Uh, I really like this game. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it. Uh, boy, there's just so few times anymore. It seems like you get a Kickstarter and you play it once, you're like, ah, this is all right. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't, yeah. And so I feel like I've gotten two. Mm -hmm. That last one we played uh, from Sam, uh, Forges of Ravenshire. Oh, yeah, that was fun. That's fun. Mm -hmm. This was fun. Uh, just two in a row. I, I, oh, boy, I just Wait, got called it. I think I might have Do I have the next one coming? The next Kickstarter coming in between the both of us? I've got the uh, Fool's Blade coming in soon. Fool's Blade. A little, little small card. Well, yeah, it's kind of a, I mean, it's a medium card game. Yeah, and I've got uh, uh, Escape from New York. Is okay. somewhere in the United States also. So. I got Hari Harakiri 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 Harakiri. Har Har I can't even say it now. Harakiri. Harakiri. It's not Harakiri. It's the it's the it's the other name for seppuku, where you kill yourself with the. Oh, it is. The, yeah, Harakiri. I think it's I think that's how you say it. Harakiri. 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 I don't know. Okay, folks. <laughs> we'll leave you here for that uh, thank you so much for tuning in if you like this video be sure to click like it really helps a lot and uh, feel free to subscribe to Organic Cardboard or myself Pick Tech Games until next time enjoy your games we'll see you soon bye 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 bye